Sorry, okay, uh, I was just going to ask you, you um, for anyone unaware, to clarify what ALVR is and what the goal of the project is, because I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people who have just never uh, heard yes, of it. Yes, people, people haven't heard of ALVR. Yes, so ALVR is a standalone headset PC to uh, PC to standalone headset streamer application. Mm -hmm. So basically, we use OpenVR currently um, to the OpenVR API to capture um, images and poses from the SteamVR runtime and send that over to the standalone headset so you can view it on the standalone headset. Mm -hmm. um, there's some issues with that. I'll get into that later. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the basic idea of the application of ALVR. The most obvious question with doing that is, like, wouldn't latency be an issue? Latency can be an issue. Mm -hmm. It depends on how bad of a setup you have in mm -hmm. terms of Wi-Fi and your PC hardware. Mm -hmm. um, for example, um, currently, because of the way we have to interface with Sting VR, um, if you exceed a certain, um, half, you exceed, if your frame time exceeds more than half of your, um, the limit to reach half of the FPS of the streaming application or headset's refresh rate, Steam VR starts missing um, mm. frames. Yeah, that doesn't because, sound good. Because of a missing feature that was originally like being discussed in I think it was 2016 or 15, and just died. The discussion died. Mm -hmm. um, and that's uh, that discussion was on how to give the compositor um, preference over the application, which can also be helpful for um, for your desktop compositor. Like mm -hmm. if your application is your regular desktop application is like really heavy and like it's right. I would imagine that would make a lot of sense for just a regular video game. Mm -hmm. And that missing piece is called compute. Tunneling, at least on AMD. I'm not sure what the NVIDIA term is. Was that, did you say compute uh, tone? What was it? Uh, compute tunneling. Oh, tunneling, so, tunneling, okay. Yeah, tunneling. So basically, you have to be running uh, in the compute queue. So you can't mm -hmm. be running on a graphics queue for this. Mm -hmm. And you have to have proper, um, a have high privileged queue mm -hmm. to. There's um, Vulkan documentation you can find on the specifics of that. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't have it, well, let's just say your compositor isn't gonna be isn't gonna be doesn't have preference over the uh, application, and so if the application exceeds the uh, vsync uh, limit or uh, the vsync. Uh, time that it has allotted to it. Like, let's say you need a uh, frame every, like, let's say 16 milliseconds. If your application takes uh, 18 second milliseconds to complete, mm -hmm. uh, you're going to get frame misses, uh, misses. So you're not going to, you may have stuttering. Um, in terms of your applications, you may notice that it's like the image is jittery. Um, And yeah, that doesn't sound pleasant because I, I I've it I've been not. someone who I've never really been able to get into VR because I've always been pretty bad with like VR sickness like motion like, sickness yeah 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 um and that could have just been the early headsets and the early ways that applications were being de uh, designed I know that there have has been a lot of research into this problem and um methods to deal with it because. As I was saying before we started recording, my last experience with VR was the Vive 2. And before that, it was 
the Oculus dev kits, <laughs> like the early, uh, like <laughs> pre-release dev kits, um, which were obviously nowhere near as what we ha- uh, as, as good as what we ha- uh, have today. So anything where there's any sort of mismatch, frame skipping, anything like that, I imagine that would just make it so much worse. Yeah, you for because of the uh, way we uh, experience VR. Um, skipping frames or um, having the view lag behind you is very sickening. So we have technologies like uh, tracking prediction. So basically it uses velocity to predict where your head is going to be in the future mm-hmm. and it helps reduce uh, motion sickness. Uh, and we have uh, reprojection. Um, I'm sure you've seen um, it was in that headline maybe like a few months ago, but there was uh, this uh, demo, a Unity demo of implementing uh, reprojection in uh, flat screen games and how that would, uh, how you can um, uncap uh, input from the game's um, refresh rate and how that improves responsiveness. And I actually missed that one, but that does sound really cool. And uh, VR, mm-hmm. because if you lag your frame behind, because we use our eyes mm-hmm. as a frame of reference for where you are in the world, if your view lags behind and your ears and your eyes aren't in sync, uh, in, in sync, uh, making obviously cause motion sickness, as mm-hmm. you probably have experienced before. Yeah, yeah. I've never let uh, like let it get really bad. We're actually like you know you know, throw up or anything. Usually when I start feeling a little bit off, I just, I, I'm, I'm just done for the day, which made my, um, in university, I had a VR game development class, which made that class very fun. Um, 10 minutes of work and then put the headset down, 10 minutes of work, put the headset down. It was, it was not pleasant. I had to do a lot of testing just on a flat screen to get anywhere with that, that class. Yeah, that sounds incredibly painful. Especially the headset I was lent at the time wasn't even a nice headset. It was one of the, like, cheap Microsoft media headsets. I don't know what it was called, but it was just not suitable for any gaming applications. It was, you are on a couch watching a movie and anything else, it just, it just doesn't work for. <laughs> 